Thank you. Good to see you. Matt, congratulations. Can you just uh, sum up the feelings, the, the joy <coughs> behind the scenes? Pride. Yeah, pure pride, really. Uh, I feel like I've got a special group of players to coach. Uh, really uh, tight group of players and, and, and staff. When I mentioned staff, not just not just the performance staff and coaching staff, but I think the vibe through the club is is excellent. And uh, you know, I feel like that's the positivity around the ground tonight, the sellout, everything that's going on around it, the event that the club put on. Uh, it showcases the club, showcases the competition, and, and to win, you know, makes it a perfect night, really. But I, I was thinking well before that, you know, when you're watching your players uh, turn up for one another, like they did continuously, uh, you can't you can't judge your emotions after the game on the result, and I wouldn't have done. And I was proud of them. Uh, I always have been, to be honest. Matty, obviously Penrith had plenty of chances to win that game, but was the most pleasing thing your players keep turning up for each other? You know, the, the defence in the corner, you know, the, the last minute, the one on Taylor and before that, like you just did, they didn't give up. Yeah, pure uh, want, desire, commitment, whatever word you you want to put to it, it's really, really occurring about about a game of rugby that symbolises a group of people, you know, and a, and a town and a club, so. You don't you don't get that sort of commitment unless you're uh, you, you care about one another, which is where my pride comes from. There's a lot of good stuff going on in that game, technically as well and systematically. The, the players work hard and all that stuff, and they're very diligent. But you can you can do that, but if you don't have the commitment and care for one another underneath it, then yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't stand up to the test. Does that care sort of underline with what, with what, what happened with Liam Marshall, you know, with his family recently? Everything we do. Yeah. Everything we do, yeah. That, that was like a, a really strong uh, example of it. But I just think the way, we, the way we deal with one another, we interact with one another through good times and, and the, you know, the difficult times. And we have, you know, even this season, during the season, we'll have tough days as well. Not every day will go. You know, end of the day, they could have given that try at the end, and uh, he would have kicked the goal. <laughs> Send us that in uh, He would have kicked the goal, and, and we would have gone in there, and still would have been proud. And the lads would still would have looked at, and we would have learned, and we've got to learn from tonight as well, and, and build now. Matt, you, you, the, the vast majority of the game—I mean, I've not seen the stats on the game, so I'm only giving an impression, but it was played mainly in your half of the field. Probably about seventy-five percent of it, I would say. Which makes the result all the more remarkable because against a team like Penrith, when they're in your half so much, it's really strange that they didn't win it, really, given their past achievements. And it, it sort of says an awful lot about your, the way your players defended to the last. Really. I think when saying that though, Martin, you're giving more attention to their past achievements than ours. Like we won a grand final without conceding a try. Mm. So our defence is. Oh, that's what I'm saying, your defence was incredible. Well, yeah. yeah. And that we. We always know it is, you know, so because we work hard on it and because the players, you know, they, they trust one another and they, they work the backsides off. So we were always confident that we could could defend. Uh, there's probably things we could have done with the ball what could have, could have made the game a bit more comfortable. Uh, but that's the challenge of playing against an outstanding team. They, they take it out of you defensively, you know, they're very powerful athletes. So sometimes you get the ball and you're in survival mode, uh, but we was always confident that when we did get a look at, at Penrith, that we've got the ability to. You know, I feel like our good ball attack. You know, it's. I don't want to compare it to those, but it certainly looked clinical when we got a look. How did Penrith uh, celebrate Scott Sattler's covering tackle in the grand final? What about the one tonight by Jake Field? What's he got to do with Penrith, Scott Sattler? Well, it's, it's one of, well, it's one of the great covering tackles ever, like that, and that was that was up there, wasn't it? You know? Yeah, and Jay's been doing that for in Super League. So what our players have done tonight, I think that's the point I'm making. What our pay, players have done tonight is be themselves against an outstanding competition. But Jay's been covering serving tries 
for seasons and uh, I can remember a handful of, of him doing the same thing and I think he's becoming one of those players that when people get against him one on one you, you, caught, you sort of expect him to make it and he works very hard on that so he probably saved two or three tries tonight uh, if not more but it's credit to his desire, his athleticism and he does his, you know, me and Bevan were just laughing about what a student of the game he is and uh, I think a lot of that he'll know exactly which side players are going to step, which side they carry the ball and that's all his hard work, you know, pays him back in those killer moments. Bevan, how, how sweet is it? Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's pretty, pretty crazy, it's surreal to be honest. Um, I know Matty spoke about the connection that everyone has within the group and yeah, it's a goal to win against a, a team like Penrith after their history and their calibre of players, um, you know, state of origin, country, captains, three premierships on the bounce. Um, just means a lot to to us and to everyone in the community or Wigan. Um, we, we know the importance of what rugby league means to, to Wigan, and um, you know they, they still speak about World Cup challenges from 30 years ago. So it's. Um, it means a lot to us. Matthew obviously said about Super League and yeah, NRL, that's about Super League champions winning the World Cup Challenge. I genuinely don't think it's a matter of com comparison. There's an unbelievable competition, it's got so much going for it, it's flying, TV, deal, etc. But we've got a good competition as well. And I don't think it should be ever a matter of comparing the two. We know what we've got here, we know what we've got uh, in this country. And we should take more pride in it. You know, we talk too much about what they think of us. We should just concern ourselves with what we think of ourselves. And uh, I'm proud to be a rugby league man. Uh, and I'm proud of, of rugby league. And you know, I talk about it in the northwest of England. I don't mean that with any <clears throat> disrespect to the teams outside of the heart, heartlands, but we shouldn't shy away from what we are. You know, we're just rugby league people who represent working class people. And uh, I'm not that too fussed about the NRL. Like, it's an unbelievable competition. We watch their games and we learn from it and we admire it. But we've got a special competition ourselves with some special individuals and we should touch talk about that. And you're a coach now with the Challenge Cup, the Ian Shield Grand Final, local challenge in two and a half years, but are you just hungry for more now? Yeah, I just want to keep learning. Uh, I think the pl you know it's the players that win it, really. <coughs> Be a good coach, but you're not going to go players. You, you know you don't get you don't get much success. So the players have done what they've done. I love being a part of it. I love working with them. And uh, yeah, there's plenty to build on, on and off the field. You know, it was a special night tonight. But who's to say we can't have more nights like that and make it more of a regular thing to increase attendances and increase the impact we're having in the town, in the community, uh, and playing better rugby for sure. Uh, yeah, we'll concentrate on that now. What do we learn from tonight? Whether we, whether we won or lost, I'm glad I can say this now, whether we won or lost tonight, we was always going to be, be a great learning experience for us all, like as an organisation, as a playing group, as a coaching staff. Uh, you know, what can, If we had this game again in, in a, a month, what would we do different? What would we do better? And that, that doesn't change just because we won. Talked about uh, your defence, which is fantastic, <coughs> Matt, but... Uh... What about the three tries you scored, which were clinical, and obviously Bevan's with the just offside? <clears throat> I know, gutted about that. I'll let Bevan answer <laughs> I think that everybody one. Everybody would go to Yeah, I know, I know. God knows why I checked it, but I'd like Bevan to answer that because uh, you know, he's the cornerstone of our attack, so Bev? What was the question, sorry? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, obviously, your defence were fantastic, yeah. but there were three clinical tries, and then there were one that was yeah. just marginally offside. Yours? Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, I think we've got a little. A squad there, and you know our backline in particular, where we can we know we can score points. Um, we, it's not nothing new, to be honest. It's we're doing it for quite a few years. Um, but I think where the where we've changed over the last couple of years is priding ourselves on our defence, and we always knew that our attack's always going to be there because we've got the individuals to do, to do what we need to do. But um, yeah, I don't know it, attack. I know we were clinical. We got the we got down there a few times. We were able to score, but as you've seen, it was definitely the defence that won tonight. And, yeah, a couple of international rules on the on the last try. I think there's um, in, in a normal setting. I think it's one foot behind in the international rules, two two feet behind the kicker's foot. Now, what I've been told. So, yeah.
I just want to say, like, as a coach, I was so proud, so proud that we had the courage to make that play. You know, it was a, it wasn't the obvious play at the time. You know, we were just ahead, uh, and I just love the fact that the, the, the fellas had the courage to put that play on. They've seen it in the week along with Tommy, and they spoke about uh, there being an opportunity there. So, but to to make that decision in that, in, you know, in the, under that so-called pressure, just. Just talks about. Uh, I think speaks volumes about the, uh, like I said, the courage the players have to express themselves, regardless of the scoreboard or the uh, the opposition. So, it made me really proud. I was I was gutted it didn't get given because I think it would have been a, an unbelievable moment for for rugby league and for this you know for the group. Uh, but yeah. Did you manage to see whether you thought it was the correct decision, Matt? Because I, I couldn't really see on a big screen very. <laughs> Clearly at all, personally. Yeah, as Bevan mentions, there, I think the chat was that it was. Uh, when you explain it, I don't know. What it was <laughs> yeah, well, like we said, Jay's a student of the game, and he says um, international ruling is two feet behind the kicker. Whereas, <laughs> and you already had one. Yeah, I think like I've always had sort of what the back foot planted, and that's what I've always gauged it off. But yeah, but so um, important thing is we won really yeah, so know, it doesn't really matter he would have definitely kicked that goal wouldn't he yeah <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't missing yeah. that I was so relieved Matt, Matt given the, the regularity of the success you've had so far this group you've had so far is, does the goal now have to be to build a dynasty and, and go back to being you know you look at what that winning team of the 80s is remembered at is that the goal for this team no it's not no it's not I don't, I don't like that word I think it's a word someone should say after you've done it like, I don't think any organisation sets out to build a dynasty like we want to learn honestly that's all we will talk about learn improve learn improve and uh, if more if there's no reason why we shouldn't get into more big games if we keep learning with the people we've got in the organisation uh, we want to build on this the thought of that being our last big night would be horrendous. So, and there's cliches in there, but you've got to take each each week as it comes. But well, this week, Mark, I don't have to learn too much this week. But uh, yeah, who knows? Matt, if, if 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 you're in this game again next year or subsequent years, would you like to go to Las Vegas? There's all this talk about. Potential. He would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sport, if we it? play last Vegas, we'll get hammered. We'll get easy. Uh, whatever it takes to showcase the game, experience new things, learn, develop. We're, we're a very open minded club. We love to be at the uh, forefront of things, innovation. I think it's great what the NRL are doing. If we could be part of that in some way, uh, but I wouldn't prefer it. To the DW or to a stadium in Australia, or, but uh, yeah, we're for it. I'm just worried about this fella. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a player, how long did that video references at the end seem? Did it seem to go on forever? Like, look at the replays, like, you got the World Cup Challenge in the back. Like, <laughs> no, I thought it went quick. <laughs> I thought he made his decision. Like, he wanted a rest. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it seemed to, I honestly thought I was sweet. I didn't, I don't know. I don't know what it looked like on the big screen, but yeah, I thought I was sweet. And I, when, it, when the decision went quick, I thought it was a um, try, but yeah, it wasn't. The players were more confident than we were. I just, it was one of those, if it, if it, probably if it goes up as a try, it might get given, but once the decision was made uh, not to send it, I don't think you could see enough to, to clear it. Or do you, what was the general consensus? It went up as a try, but the try yeah. Try. yeah, so, uh, yeah, happy days. Matt, given what you are just saying about, you know, not wanting to be last final and not, you know, and, and all that. Can you enjoy the enormity of what you've achieved in the moment? You know, the, you think about the World Cup Challenge teams that we've had in the past and how they're remembered. This is going to get remembered like that. Can you enjoy that for what it is right now when you are just constantly looking at the next thing improving? Yeah, I, yeah, I'll enjoy it. 100% I'll enjoy it because I enjoy like the the bit about improving. That's enjoyable. It's not, you know, it's not work. work it working with these lot and uh, I always think like we could have lost that and I still would have been proud you know so uh, yeah I'll enjoy it I love watching the players love being in the changing rooms love coming in here as a winning coach uh, yeah so yeah we, we try we make a conscious effort to just pause uh, reflect appreciate what we're doing uh, so yeah 
I think it's it's another one of those things as a coach like I want my players to be to enjoy it. So if I'm like constantly talking about what's next, what's next, then how can they buy into me saying that, you know. Likewise I want them to be themselves and have their own personality, so I've gotta I've gotta stay true to myself. So uh, that's my only the only approach I know. But yeah, I want I want the lads to rip in, I want them to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're only going to get a fuss for doing it again as well, aren't they? If it's if it's enjoyable, I think if it's just constant grind, uh, you know, there has to be some fun in there. And some, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think it's an infectious feeling. Um, you know, we celebrated hard after we won the grand final, and it makes you want to do it again. And same thing with them. It's um, you know they're the quality of their side and what they've achieved to be able to win that for the World Club Challenge against a team like that. It's, you've got to celebrate and let you want to do it again. Over a year off contract at the end of the year, I mean, is that another reason to stay? And we can obviously be part of this group and nights like tonight and you know, what you've achieved last year as well. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I've always, like I said, I've always enjoyed my time here. And, you know, it's a winning culture and I've learned a lot here. And, um, you know, but I've always said I've had that thing in the back of my mind one day, but, um, it's not really crossed my mind at all, really, of my next step, to be honest. Uh, more focused on what tonight brought and, and the rest of this, this season. And, um, yeah, that's what my manager's for. It's all over. <laughs> I think a couple of years ago, you, you had the chance to maybe go back, didn't you? And you signed that new contract to stay here. Does this further vindicate that decision to, to stay at Wigan because you won everything now as a Wigan player? Yeah, there was... Um, there's, I wanted to stay here because... No, I love the people um, within the club and, uh, the, like I said, the winning culture and I've learned a lot and I keep continue to learn and, um, you know, obviously there was things I wanted to achieve but I hadn't won a grand final or anything before I'd signed that deal and, um, yeah, I just, just wanted, wanted to win things. As an Aussie, to turn over the Penrith Pump is an unbelievable side, aren't they? What, what how much pride do you take from that, personally? Um, yeah, I think, I think it's, uh, I, I spoke about it before, before leaving this game, um, because we will be more, it gives me confidence, I'm proud of myself for not coming up with big plays or anything like that, just I think in previous years, I'd try and get a bit excited and have a rush of blood and try to force my hand a little bit, and, and to be able to stay calm and controlled and I guess present against a quality Opposition like that in you know high intense games, it's, um, that's what I'm most proud of really. That that cut out pass for first try, no look was was pretty sweet. You yeah, can't have pulled off to me like that, is it? In a big game like this. Yeah, it's um <laughs> not not my call. That. That's how best he's in my ear 24 seven about that. So <laughs> um yeah, I know that's the thing. That's just the trust we have in with one another, and um you know when it's, it was a pretty special combination we formed last year and. I hope we can continue to do that this year and um, you know it's just it's not like I'm going out there and calling things as well we, we speak amongst our edges what we see and what we think might work so we just have enough trust in one another to, to pull it off. Very few clubs win a World Cup challenge at the beginning of the season and a title at the end of it have you thought anything about that or, or just going to see where it's going to take? Yeah I just uh, I didn't think too much about, about that to be honest uh, no, we just obviously we want to have the best season we can. You know, with a loss, it won't really be any different. But, yeah. I don't know. Sorry. So, when was the call made on Cruz leaving, and how was it? Do you mean the call, call to to bring him off? No, I think he could be thrown back. Yeah, he uh, he trained not last he's there the day before. Uh, got through it. Yeah, I don't know who he is. Obviously, you didn't see right to carry on. It wasn't a particularly big call, that. It was. Uh, it seemed alright, but obviously not. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Did Liam Byrne pass his head, Joe? I was just saying, so I'm not sure. I hope so. Can you just say something about Mike Cooper? Because you picked him to start. <coughs> you know, it, 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 it had such a long time out of the team. Yeah, I think he deserves special credit tonight yeah, I to do what he did. Uh, 
and he never blinked on the coach on the way home from Castleford. And obviously we uh, <clears throat> we knew we'd lost Tomo. <laughs> Come in, lad. <laughs> Come in. Ah, uh, brother. The uh, he, I said to him, how would you feel about about starting next week? And he just, said, yeah, that's cool. Look forward to it. He had so, one great chance down the field, didn't he? You yeah, know, I thought. Yeah, and the uh, his defence, his leadership. Big presence for us. Uh, he spoke really well all week. So yeah, it's funny how things turn out, isn't it? And uh, I think the, the other days for, with players, what you love to be a part of when you see him working behind the scenes, you know, uh, bad injury what he has and the sacrifice he makes, and then to get that moment because he missed the grand final, uh, to get for him to get that moment is uh, is special. He deserves it as well. Thank you,